in need of strength. And I'm really thankful that Kevin led that for us because this is a really powerful song. Because it really brings down to what is core. We always talk about the differences between needs and wants. Wants, they're things that in life that are not necessary. They're the extra pleasures in life. You know, instead of just needing a car, maybe we go up and need that really nice Mercedes or really nice Lexus. Or you don't really need a TV at all, but instead you want that, you know, nice 40-inch, 4K TV all connected to your, to your toys and things like that. But needs, needs are those necessary things in life. They're the basics, the building blocks. We talk about food, water, shelter in this day and age, car, cell phone, things that have become needs, things we can't really live without, otherwise it's very hard to go throughout our life. But wants take a, have another aspect to them as well. Wants are what we communicate to others so that they can help us facilitate our desires. Think about when, comes to, uh, to when they come, people come to ask you for maybe your birthday. They don't ask, what do you need? They tend to ask, what do you want? Or when you're talking to other people, you tend to say, I want this or I would like this if you're being polite. But needs, needs are something we tend to keep close to ourselves close to our hearts. It's something that we do or say for us. In this case, a lot of times our needs we communicate to God, as we did in this song. Needs are a fundamental building block for ourselves here. A great illustration of it is, is the first Toy Story movie. Think of it this way, with, with Woody. Woody wants to be Andy's favorite toy. He wants to be the go-to toy, the number one and then his world is shattered when a brand new box it comes down on the bed. And lo and behold, the nicest, newest piece of plastic comes out. It is Buzz Lightyear who has really no idea what's going on. He's kind of checked out of their reality, still in his little toy Lightyear world. But Woody learns throughout this journey that he needs to share. He needs to learn how to share. That it's not okay to always be number one. That he needs to put others first. But there's an even deeper need that he discovers at the very end of that movie. It's a need of community. It's a need of family. Being number one, isolating yourself like that, is not good. And it's not healthy. Solidarity does nobody any favors. Community is what builds us up and builds strength for each of us. So when we're talking to God and we admit, it's what we did this morning in that song, a need, we admit, I need some things. What are we saying? What are we admitting? Seems like I'm saying I am not enough. I cannot do it all. I cannot stand in solidarity as a, my own guardian, as my own source of strength. Father, I need you. I need your help. Paul says in Ephesians 6.10, he says, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. And then he gives us encouraging good ways to help further fortify our strength through the armor of God that he lists there, encouraging us to find strength in the Lord. That true strength, unlimited strength, comes from those who put their trust in the Lord. You know, we love biblical illustrations. I want to take us to one now that really emphasizes being in need of strength. We should all be familiar with I would maybe say the strongest man in the Bible, at least the original strong man, that is Samson. Now, we understand that Samson was strong. There's no denying that Samson was strong. In fact, if you want to turn over to Judges uh, chapter 14, we'll be glancing through some of those areas in the book of Judges. Just taking peeks at Samson's life here. He is strong. He kills 
a thousand Philistines with just a single jawbone of a donkey. I'm impressed by the fortification of that jawbone. But he kills a thousand people with a jawbone. We see at the beginning of his adult life, he literally tears a lion apart with his bare hands. A little bit later on, makes a foolish mistake in chapter 16, and instead of getting caught out by the men of the city, he goes and he tears up and carries off their city gates, takes them over to a hill and sets them up and stands vigil there. And then we see at the very end of his life, he brought down the temple of Dagon on all of the leading Philistines, plus a few more to the total of 3,000, by simply pulling on his chains and bringing the whole thing down on everybody. Samson is a strong man. But the question we have to ask ourselves is, did Samson have true strength? Did Samson have true strength? We see and understand where his power comes from in Judges 16 and verse 17. When Delilah is trying to uh, really work against Samson in all things, testing him over and over again, trying to get him caught because she's more interested in the gold than in Samson, she finally breaks down crying on his lap, saying, if you will truly love me, if you truly love me, you will tell me where your source of strength is. In fact, it says in 16, it came past when she pressed him daily with her words and urged him that his soul was annoyed to death. That's a lot of persistent begging where you are annoyed to death. Verse 17, so he told her that all, all that was in his heart and said to her, a razor has never come onto my head, for I have been a Nazarite to God from my mother's womb. If I am shaved, then my strength will leave me, and I will become weak and be like any other man. We see that as far as Samson was aware, his fortification strength comes from his hair and this vow that he is living, this way of life he is living. But if you look throughout Samson's life, over and over and over again, I believe at least three times it's mentioned, when those feats of strength came up, it was not his power that did it. It says, and the Spirit of the Lord descended upon Samson. And then that marvelous, strong task was shown. We see it in the first two instances of his life, and we see it at the very end of his life when he prays to God. And he grants him his power one more time. For most of his life, Samson is a strong man, but truly lacks strength. How is he lacking, though? How is he lacking true strength? First off, trust in the Lord. When we look at the biblical account, the only time that Samson we see ever turns to the Lord is when his eyes have been plucked out. He is standing chained between those two columns, a mockery of himself, of the nation, and of the Lord. He had no trust in the Lord until that very last minute of his life. We see that he has no respect for the Lord. If you have no trust in the Lord, how do you have a respect? No relationship, no respect. Look at the deeds that he does throughout his life as he is uh, as he's unpurified himself by taking from that dead lion carcass, interacting with all of these women outside of the nation of Israel, going as far as trying to marry a couple of them. We see that in chapter 16, the beginning, that he goes and he lays with a harlot. And we understand with Delilah that she is probably not much better, and she is also not of the nation of Israel. Samson shows no respect to the Lord and to his commands, as he is named and proclaimed judge of Israel at this time. Not a good example to the people. And he lacks, as I said, a true relationship with God. 
He had strength. The Spirit of the Lord was with him, but Samson did not know the Lord his God. Didn't know. So if we want to be strong, truly strong, unlike Samson, what must I do? What must we do to find true strength in our life? But first we have to ask, why? Why do I need this strength? Simply it's because Satan is trying to tear us down. He's an adversary that we cannot beat alone. Temptation is hard. Have you really thought hard and long and hard about that? How hard and difficult temptation really is? That yes, there's the generic temptations that all of us face, but Satan knows. Specifically, what are individual weaknesses and problems are? He knows. And he knows exactly how to go in and take those little darts of his and just dig them into us, poking us, putting them in, letting those wounds fester and hurt because he knows what will cause us to stumble. He knows it because he's a prowling lion. He's the primest example, the purest example of a hunter using his senses and his tools and his tactics to get into us and to rip us apart piece by piece so that in our eyes, we're useless before God. And we can't stand before the throne. We can't serve in the kingdom because in our eyes, what are we? But a lazy, beat-up, torn-down dog. But the Lord says, I will give you strength. I'm going to give it to you in so many different ways. We see in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6. Philippians 4 and verse 6. That if we turn to him in prayer, he will be with us. He says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything be prayer And supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Talk to him. Share with me, God is saying. I will grant you strength if you will only ask. If you will only share with me what you need. Then he says, remember the most marvelous gift. I gave to you the gift of grace. The grace that has been given to us, we see in Romans 3. Romans 3 and verse 20, 20, 23 through 24. He says, You who boast in the law, though you're breaking the law, do you dishonor God? For the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles because of you, just as it is written. Remember God's grace that he's given to us. That his son died for us. So that we can have a hope with him. He gave us strength in death. Strength in knowing that if we take our lives and lay it before the throne there, giving it back to him, he will fortify us and give us strength. He gave us a family to support us. We see in 2 Corinthians 12 and verse 10. 2 Corinthians 12 and verse 10. Yes, there's going to be a lot of flipping around right now. He says, Therefore I am well content with weakness, with insults, with distress, with persecutions, with difficulties for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, I am strong. When you take insults, or when you took insults as a, as a kid, at least I did in this case, I didn't turn to my friends to complain because they tended to be the ones making the insults. I went to my parents, and I would sit down with them, and I would share with them the, these insults, the things that people were saying to me and about me, about my faith. 
And a lot of times I'd be in tears because it hurt. Why were they attacking me like this? It's because I was standing apart. Because I was different. And the Lord tells us here, these insults, all this tearing down is going to do nothing but strengthen you. Because I am strong. We see in Galatians 6, verses 1 through 2, he says, Brethren, if anyone is caught up in trespass, you who are spiritual, restore to one, to restore such a one in spirit of gentleness, each one looking to yourself, so that you too will not be tempted, but bear one another's burdens, and therefore, and thereby fulfill the law of Christ. The family bears one another's burdens. The family together lifts us up. And helps to make each and every one of us strong. Because if you have found your strength in the Lord, you need to share it. Share it with one another. Because those who are weak need nothing more than to seek out those who are strong. To stand by them in their defense, in their strength, so that they have a chance to recover, to refortify themselves, and make them better. Use your strength to God's glory so you can lift up others. But in all reality, nobody has 100% pure and perfect strength it'd be amazing if we did awesome if each of us could be immune to sin immune to all of satan's darts but it's just not the case but that's why we stand strong together because when i need your shield to help and to protect me you'll be there and when you need my strength and my shield you will know I am there. That is what family, this church family, is really all about. When you're looking strong, I promise you someone is looking out for that strength because they're suffering and they need it. Show and share your strength. And lastly, the Lord tells us there is so much strength to be found in encouragement. As I said, the family does nothing but build each other up. They do it through encouragement. Back to Philippians chapter 4. Philippians 4 and verse 3. Paul says, Indeed, true companion, I ask you also to help these women who have shared in my struggle in the cause of the gospel, together with Clement and also the rest of my workers, whose names are in the book. Encourage. He's telling the people there, encourage one another. Build one another up. Isaiah tells us in Isaiah 40 and verse 31, Yet those who wait for the Lord will gain new strength. They will mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not be weary. And they will walk and not faint. I love that song. I love that hymn that we've written through that. As we weigh the Lord together, we build up new strength and we'll become something amazing and greater together. And he grants us the greatest encouragement in 1 Corinthians 10, 13. That no temptation has overtaken you, such as is common to man, but God is faithful, who will not allow tempt your temptations to take you beyond what you're able such a powerful piece of encouragement for us to know that I am strong enough through God to stand for so many things, but he's going to prevent and keep the things that would really tear us down, take our knees out from under us and hold us there. He's going to hold those things back. Keep them away from us. Because he loves us. Because he wants nothing more than for us to stand strong. 
and to stand holy in him. Strength is truly a gift that we need for ourselves. Each and every one of us need to find our strength, need to proclaim, I am in need, desperate need of strength. But we need to remember to share it with others. Remember Samson. Samson showed his physical strength to the world. His reputation was, I am a strong man, and there's nothing you can do about this. Goliath was a strong man. Stood strong in the face of Israel and said, there is nothing you can do about this. Send out your best, though. And they did. The Lord sent out the nation's best. He was a ruddy little boy, ruddy young lad. Not even up to, Sam, to Goliath's waist and height. Yet took him down, not with sword and shield and armor, but with a staff, with a sling, with five smooth stones. Because that young man had true strength in the Lord. He had a trust in the Lord. He had a respect in the Lord. And David had an almighty, powerful relationship with the Lord. True strength has nothing to do with how much we can lift, how fast we can run, but instead has everything to do with how we can lift each other up and how well I will run my own spiritual race. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 9, verses 24 through 27, Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but only one will receive the prize? Run in such a way that you may win. Everyone who competes in the games exercise self-control in all things. Then they do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we have an imperishable one. Therefore I run in such a way as not without aim, but I box in such a way as not just to beating the air, but I discipline my body and make it my slave, so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified. We run together. We lift each, each one of us up, but in the end, it is you alone who will receive the prize. You alone will be held accountable for your strength. And for those other things that we call out, being in need. Calling out to our Father, I'm in need of grace. I'm in need of love. I'm in need of peace. Most importantly, I am in need of your Son, Christ. Five powerful things to call out and know that I am in need. But lastly, I want to say this, that true strength, true strength is found in your final hour. 2 Timothy 4, verse 7 through 8. Being able to call out on your final hour, your last thoughts in confidence, in joy and in strength and power, calling out and saying, For I have fought the good fight, I have finished the course, I have kept the faith. In the future there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. Brothers and sisters, that is the epitome true strength. That is the final goal of true strength. Proudly and boldly proclaiming 
I am yours. I am in need of you, Father God. Thank you for your kind attention. We'll have a prayer, a verse or two of a song, and then we'll be dismissed to classes.